What kind of secret uh, idea has to, to be so innovative and keeping up to bring in new things all the time? Well, I suppose that the answer is maybe a little obvious, but when you have an organization where you've worked really hard to recruit the most innovative people you can find, and there's something special about the people at IDEO is that they're, they are innovative and they're collaborative, right? So they want to work together. Um, when, you've done, when you've worked really hard to recruit those people, you'd be really stupid if you didn't, didn't give them some space and time to innovate, not just only on behalf of our clients, but on behalf of IDEO too. And so we have a lot of I know, maybe you call it kind of design activism going on in IDEO everywhere, right? So there are new ideas bubbling up all of, all of the time. And then we have some very lightweight structures for investing in those ideas in order to grow them when they're, ex when they're exciting. So for instance, uh, we recently launched our online university, IDEO, IDEO U, and that came from a small team inside IDEO that were passionate about teaching. And they ran a little design charrette and they came up with this thought and then they built a really quick prototype like in a day of a, what the first course was going to look like and that was convincing enough to say you know let's take a little bit of money and try and try and make that first course and now we have 15 courses and and uh, we're teaching 15,000 students a year so yeah, you know so we these these ideas evolve uh, we trust people in the organization to have the best new ideas and then we try and support them where, where we can in order to in order to let them grow. It's not, it's not always easy to spot them and it's not always easy to give people the time. Uh, but one thing I can be totally confident about is that there's always lots of new ideas bubbling up inside that, yeah. Yeah, and, and one thing you, you said to me that raised my attention, you said about recruiting the right people. Yeah. Because this is a very specific behavior. But many organizations, they are m much more traditional. They are big and, and they have a, a, a less flexible structure. What, what kind of advice would, would you give to, to this very large organization that are facing a massive disruption yeah. absolutely everywhere well, to, to become more? Totally. I mean, if you believe that you have to have more and better ideas and you have to do more with those ideas, if you don't believe it, then I don't, you don't change, right? You just stay focused on efficiency. But if you do believe that, then, uh, then how, however you want to describe it, you need more people with more entrepreneurialism, or with more what we would call creative confidence, the ability to have new ideas and then, and then the confidence to act on them uh, in, your, in your organization. So if you, uh, you've got to try and unlock whatever of that is already there and recruit more people um, with that in mind. I mean, we, we, we recruit mostly based on values rather than skills. I mean, we, we, obviously you're looking for people with certain skills, but, but we're really careful to look for people. I mean, one of our most important values at IDEO is this idea of making others successful because we believe in collaborative innovation not just the individual genius and that's been incredibly helpful to us because we're very good at spotting people who want to work with other people to do creative things and I think that's important for all organizations uh, I, I, I think it's one of the one of the under uh, under or misunderstood important characteristics of successful organizations is that they have people in them who want to help other people yeah, uh, yeah. And, and that includes customers, obviously, but it also includes other people in, the, in your own organization. And I think recruiting for that bias is a tremendously important thing for, I think, for all organizations to do. Yeah, and, and this is a, a perfect point uh, to, to tell you. We, we did recently a research, and, and one of the, the key findings uh, are related to that, but not in an extremely positive way. It's, there is a massive problem on large organizations, large governments, about silos. Yeah, it's totally. exactly the the lack, and this drives me to the second point. It's a people act on their self-interest, mm -hmm. and and so there is this challenge. You need to change to survive, but at the same time, you you need to you want to keep your own kingdom, and it's it's basically the opposite. So, but how organizations can improve that? Imagine that they already have the, the team and the team has its, its mindset that it's, people yeah. don't change as no. fast as. No, but I do think we can do a better job of leading, not just to develop individuals, but to develop communities, right? I mean, you know, if you think about the history of humanity has been about how we've designed bigger and bigger and more complex communities. That's really the thing that's evolved most, right? And, and uh, 
And that's true in businesses too. If we only stay focused on the individual, then we'll only get the productivity of the individual and we'll get all of these silos and we'll get this self-interest that dominates. But if we are good at building communities, small communities around projects, large communities around businesses, whatever they might be, then, then, then I think we have the opportunity to create real leverage and, and real impact at, uh, at scale. So we have to remember that our job as leaders isn't just to promote and encourage individuals, it's to promote and encourage communities. So most of the success of IDEO, you think it's this it's innovative a approach on, on helping each other, and uh, totally. it's like, a, I would say, a self-regulated environment. Uh, it so is, and the amount of trust. We probably have very few rules. We have on, relatively few yeah. rules. There's a high degree of trust and a willingness to forgive somebody if they've done something that actually may be not in your interest, but you can see it's in the broader interest. And that's a very oh, hard... That, that's a very that's, powerful thing. And yeah? it's a very hard thing to keep, to keep encouraging. Right? And as the organization gets bigger, it gets harder and harder, harder and harder to do. And we're relatively small, so I mean, I, I'm not sure that, that uh, it, it wouldn't be necessarily very easy for, I, for us to take everything we do and apply it to a 100,000 person organization. Yeah. Yeah, but what would be your advice? If you have uh, maybe one or two pieces of advice for those who are listening to this, for the C-level executives that are facing challenges on transforming themselves, so what would be your, your experience and your advice? I'd go back and say you need to encourage two things. You need to encourage creativity and entrepreneurship, and you need to encourage collaboration. Right? And, 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 you, and however you choose to measure that and whatever objectives you set for it, you need to encourage both those things. Just one will create lots of energy, but also lots of divisiveness. Um, if you just encourage collaboration, you get nothing new and interesting. It's, that's just bureaucracy or teamwork. Yeah. Um, and so it's tremendously important that as leaders, we encourage both of these things. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was wonderful thank talking you. to you. And thank you yeah. for taking the time to talk to us. It's a today. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks very thank much. You.